And now we start worship, huh? Okay, you may be seated for now. <laughs> Blessed Memorial Day weekend to you all. I'm glad that there was some rain so that those might, who might otherwise out, be out in the fields had an excuse to come to worship on this day. <laughs> or maybe you that would rather be out at the lake had were drawn in just because it was rainy outside. So perfection. We're gathered here to worship in virtual space, in real space, to praise our God together. A few announcements about this upcoming week. I will actually be out of the office. I'll be on vacation with my parents, just basically visiting my family. So um, after worship until um, after next Sunday. So I'll be back in the office next Monday. If you have any emergencies or things that come up, Mallory, you can call her in the office. And if it's urgent, uh, she can contact me and let me know. Um, but just so you know, I'll be out. And next Sunday, there will be a supply preacher, Joy Granger. She's from East Grand Forks. She's retired, but she's really excited to be joining you all. And it'll be a communion Sunday. And because she's a pastor, she can give communion too. So it'll be a great time. I hope you will come out and uh, support her and receive the message that she has. Other announcements that I'm missing. You'll notice there's really nothing on the calendar because we're into the summer now and uh, things kind of shut down until the fall begins again. So not much going on here, but if there is. No? Okay, fair enough. There was one at Melo. So. <laughs> so with that, we'll just take a moment to center our hearts and prepare ourselves for worship, and then we'll join together in singing. I appreciated the exchange that happened up there. It was kind of a nice tag-in moment. We're body of Christ together. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life with Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. 
For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst. Cleanse our hearts. Wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving now and forever. Amen. And as usual, before you leave today, I invite you to come to the font and mark yourself with the sign of the cross to remember that you are a dearly loved child of God. Let us join in praying together. O oh God, form the minds of your faithful people into your one will. Make us love what you have command and desire what you promise, that amid all the changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joy is found, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. Good morning. Good morning. Today's first reading comes from the book of Acts, chapter 1, starting with the first verse. In the first book, the uh oh, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, It is not for you to know the times or the periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Word of God, word of life. Okay, today's psalm comes from Psalm 47, beginning with the first verse, and we will read it responsively by full verse. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a joyful sound. For the Lord Most High is here, and King over Who subdues the peoples under us and the nations under our feet? <coughs> God has gone up with the shout, the Lord with the sound of the ram's horn. Sing praises to God. Sing praises. For God is king of all the earth. 
Sing praises with a song. The nobles of the peoples have gathered as the people of the God of Abraham. The rulers of the earth belong to God, who is highly exalted. Today's second reading comes from Ephesians, the first <clears throat> chapter, beginning with the 15th verse. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the ages to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the eleven and to those who are with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything that is written about me in the law of Moses, the Psalms, and the prophets must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and on the third day to rise from the dead, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And see, I am sending upon you what has been promised by my Father. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. And while he blessed them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And his disciples worshipped him. And they returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. And if there are any children that would like to come forward for a children's message... I know that there's not many, but we can make do. Or if there's any young at heart adults out there that would like to come forward for the children's message. 
How's it going, friend? <laughs> Are you excited to be up here all by yourself today? You get to be the smart one in the whole crowd, and everyone will adore you for it. <laughs> so the message that we heard for today, <laughs> do you want to come up here? Come on. Come on up. We're going to have a buddy. Hooray. <laughs> Come on up. Hi there. There you go. So what we heard in the gospel today is that Jesus was being carried up into heaven, right? And he had left his disciples behind with a task that now it's their turn to sort of go out and proclaim all it is that they've seen and heard. Have you ever done that before? You're like, I've seen it, I heard it, I'm going to go out there and do it. Or I'm going to go out there and tell other people about it. No, not really? Well, you get got a chance to do it right now, okay? So I have some messages that I wrote down ahead of time, and your task, and your task, I'll come with you, is to go out there and to deliver the messages to those different people out there, okay? There's not enough for everyone, but you'll just have to pick and choose your favorite people. I'm just kidding. Um, some people to share the message with. Does that seem attainable to you? All right, so here's some for you, and we'll go out together, okay? Your shoes are on the wrong feet. <laughs> okay, you go ahead of us. Come on. Can you give this to them? Okay, come on. Can you give this to them? Okay, let's keep going. Can you give this to her? All right, let's go. You can go back up and sit up front for a second. Can you give this to them? We got one more. Who should we give this to? Can you choose someone to give it to? Yeah, give it to your buddy back here. Good job. Let's go up to the front. Okay, oh, we did it. Good job. High five. High five. How did it feel to deliver those messages out there? Yeah? Did you get to read a few of them? Yeah? What were some of those messages that you were sharing out there? Do you remember? Hey, some of you who received messages, what did you receive out there? You are totally awesome. You are totally awesome. What a great message to hand out. For you and flowers. Beautiful. What else? No one could replace you. What a great message. You are loved by God. Beautiful. What else? A smiley face. Yeah, I know that there was a couple of them that made them out there. And how did it feel? Go ahead. Jesus is alive, so you have new life. A beautiful Easter message. And how did it feel to receive those messages? You liked it. <laughs> Thumbs up. Wonderful. Good. Did it make you smile a little bit to receive that message? Yeah. Yeah, I saw some smiles out there. So that's what happens when we share the good news of the gospel with people. We are allowed to bring the words of Jesus to them and make their day a little bit brighter. So you got to do that today. How awesome is that? So we're going to pray now that the Spirit would help us to do that out in the world whenever we encounter people, because we always carry the word of God with us. Okay? So let's get our hands ready. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we thank you for your word. Help us to proclaim it among the people whom we meet out in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks for coming up today. Take a piece of candy to go. And can you take an extra piece? to 
sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross my dad to pay from the cross to the grave from the grave to the sky Lord I lift your name on Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. You are witnesses of these things. That's the message that stuck out to me most. You notice it's on the front page of your bulletin, this message from Jesus that gets repeated twice as he's about to depart from his disciples. Once in the Gospel of Luke, another time in Acts, just before he's about to be carried up and away from them. And a witness is simply someone who has seen or heard something, right? So they've seen and heard what it is that Jesus has been doing. They've seen his resurrection, which happened in the Luke text just before our reading. So they were totally shocked and surprised by Jesus coming in in the room, thought he was a ghost, needed some extra reassurance that he wasn't because he ate food in front of them? I don't know. Um, So they got to witness the resurrection in front of them. They witnessed his death, maybe not directly because some of them chose to not be present at the cross of the crucifixion, but they know of his death at least. They witnessed all of his miracles that had taken place, the way that he healed people and fed people and met people where they were at, and they heard all of the proclamations that he had made about the coming of the kingdom of God and ways that we can be living into God's way of life in our world. So they've seen this and they've heard this throughout their time of being with Jesus. And now he's giving them an additional task as witnesses, which is to go out and to testify to what it is that you have seen and heard kind of like what the kids were made to do up here. It was their turn to go out and to declare what it is that they have seen and what it is that they've heard. Not just in Jerusalem, that was a starting place, but to all people, right? Samaria, Judea, all the surrounding region, all the nations, so that the good news of Jesus Christ could be spread to all people everywhere. And we receive a similar commission from Jesus as Christians that exist today. We may not have been like the witnesses that these disciples were, people that saw and heard in the flesh what Jesus was doing and saying. But we have heard from the scriptures what Jesus has been up to. We have come to believe it in ourselves. And so we also receive that task. You are witnesses of these things. Go out and share what it is that you know about me to the world. And I think that that's really important for us to be leaning into, particularly in these days, because while we are witnesses to the gospel and the good news that is present in our faith, we are also witnesses to some pretty bad news that exists out in the world and in our own country. I'm thinking about Tuesday about what happened in Uvalde, Texas, where young children's lives were taken and their teachers at school, at a place where they should have been safe, by an 18-year-old, someone who wasn't much more than a child himself, right? We had seniors walk across the stage on Friday where that were that age. And I know that this has struck home for a lot of us, Right? It feels too close to home because it deals with our children, or it could have been our children, it could have been our grandchildren. And I think that the superintendent of our schools, he wrote a message on the school's website 
on Wednesday, saying even though this event was hundreds of miles away from our communities, the media coverage has brought it into our homes, into our schools, into our lives. Isn't that true? We're witnesses to this event, to this event that all of us had hoped would never happen again after this last school shooting, which was not that long ago. There's been too many of them even in just my lifetime. I'm 28 years old, and Columbine was in 1999, right? We are a witness of this repeat event. We're witnesses that we haven't learned the lesson that we needed to learn as a country in order to prevent this event from happening again. We're witnesses that to the fear that this has evoked, not just for the people in Uvalde, but also for all of us that love and care for children, right? Something we've been doing this whole month of May, celebrating our young people in this church, in this place. We're witnesses to those bad things, too. And, you know, the gospel is needed in these places especially. We need to be people that can witness to the gospel even in the midst of this tough situation. And I know that that seems like it's hard to do. right? There's a reason, I think, why Jesus said, you need to wait to be clothed with power from on high if you're going to do this work. Because he knew his disciples would be going out and encountering situations like this. Situations of pain and not being sure of what they're going to say, what they might do. So I don't have the easy solutions. But I think that Jesus' little proclamation to his disciples before he left them gives us a little hint of the kind of gospel that we could bring to people in our communities, in the United States, in the midst of this troubling time. The first message that Jesus gives is to remind his disciples that the Messiah must suffer, that he himself endured suffering and pain. And so because he endured suffering and pain, we know that God knows our pain, and God joins us in our pain particularly at the cross, where Jesus took on the harshness that humanity offered to him and endured the pain of death. A professor that I had at the Lutheran School of Theology at Chicago wrote a book called The Scandalous God. And he wrote that at the cross, we witness in that wretched, tortured body the truth that in all suffering of the world, we meet God with us the God that dared to be emptied in solidarity with the human condition. So the first point that we can bring up to people is that God joins us in this pain, that God isn't somehow removed and far away. In fact, some theologians even say that in the midst of troubling times, the cross is right there, standing again. So Jesus joins us in this time of hardship. The second point that Jesus brings up is to say that this Messiah who suffered rises from the grave. And this is the place where we find our deepest resilience, I think, and our deepest hope. Because while it was so bad what happened on Tuesday, we hold on to hope beyond hope that death does not have the final word, that the grave gives way to resurrection that there is a resurrection life that we are able to participate in that looks so different from what the world often gives to us. And so that hope is something that we can share with people that might feel trapped in the midst of despair. Like, when is this ever going to be figured out? Why couldn't we prevent this from happening? Why couldn't have we done better this time? Speaking hope into the situation allows us to say, we didn't learn this time, but we are going to keep trying because there is resurrection after death. There is more to this life than the grave and the hardship. And the final thing that Jesus brings up to his disciples is the proclamation of repentance and the forgiveness of sins which I think points to us a sort of lifestyle change that needs to happen in the wake of the gospel. right? We don't receive the gospel and then continue on as if everything is fine the way it is. We receive the gospel and we turn away. 
We turn away from those patterns that we have been living into, the ways of life that we think are so strict and unchangeable, the ways that we have intuited and walked really unconsciously without thinking. We need to turn from those ways, repent, turn away to live more fully into God's way of life for us. And I know that the forgiveness of sins part is kind of hard to hear right now because I think that there's a lot of blame being passed around in this time, right? Blame toward that 18-year-old, blame toward the police that were so slow in responding, blame. And it's hard to be told, okay, how do we proclaim forgiveness into this place? And maybe it means forgiveness is suspended for a little bit. Maybe we need to see signs of repentance. We need to encourage a turning before we can even entertain a thought of forgiveness. But forgiveness is part of the gospel too. It's what opens up to us a different way of life. It shows that we aren't trapped in sin but are able to live in a different way. So maybe if it's not now, at some point we can be participants in proclaiming forgiveness of sin so that people can be released from this traumatic event, released from the anger, and allowed to live in a new way. The gospel is needed now more than ever, particularly in events where pain is present. And we are witnesses to that. We are witnesses of that gospel truth, that good news that meets the bad news. So if we're going to proclaim that, we're going to need some help, right? We're going to need that Holy Spirit, that power from on high to be able to send us out to do this work. So can I pray for us all today that we might be bearers for that gospel? Let us pray. Holy Jesus, We ask that you would make us vessels of your good news. You have shown us your ways, the ways that you have healed and touched lives and changed them. We've seen how you conquered the grave through rising again. Give us boldness to be able to proclaim these truths into this pain, to be able to join alongside people in their suffering and to say, you are there to be able to point in hope to your resurrection that is coming, to be able to help people to turn around from the patterns of this world that are destructive. Lord, fill us. Lord, send us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
story for some have never heard a message of salvation from God's own holy word I love to tell the story to help me and his love I love to tell the story how pleasant to in the hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest and when Sing the new, new song. I'll sing the old, old story that I have loved so long. I love to tell the, the story to help me my theme in glory. and his love. Let us join together in proclaiming our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy God, make your people one as you and your Son are one. Extend the gifts we have been given by your Spirit to all people, especially those experiencing division or questioning your love. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Draw near to console all who have lost loved ones to gun violence, especially the families of victims in Buffalo, New York, and Uvalde, Texas. Change the hearts of all who seek violence and give wisdom to create change in our communities and country. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Keep in our minds those who have died in war, both military and civilians. May we honor them by seeking peaceful solutions to the conflicts that arise among nations and peoples. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant freedom to all who are overwhelmed by chronic illness, depression, constant worry, those who are ill or lonely, especially Willis Grokow, Don and Shirley Vansicle, David and Brandon Miney, Billy Satry, Brooks Hansen, Elise Davey, Landon Labine, Connie Troska, Jake and Lauren Davis, and those we name before you in the silence of our hearts. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Stir imagination and understanding throughout the church and the work of poets, theologians, and hymn writers. Lead us into new visions and fresh expressions of your presence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Unite us with the saints who have died and been raised in Jesus. Train us to wait with eager longing for Christ to come again, even as we sense his presence with us now. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Please share a sign of peace with one another. and receive this blessing. May God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Tell what God has done. Thanks be to God.